second quarter, this 1981 Rose Bowl game. Happy New Year from all of us at NBC. And Michigan, very tough all season long, allowed only 10 points in the first quarter. And true to form, they shut out Washington in the first 15 minutes today. But the Huskies have returned the favor, and it's Washington's ball. First and 10 at its 37-yard line as we open the second quarter. Tom Flick to throw. Wide open is Bale, and he's out of bounds at the 45-yard line, a gain of eight more. And there was no one close to Bale in a white uniform. Let's take a look at Washington's scoring report card in the course of this 1980 season, and they got an A grade in the second period. Those numbers are quite unbelievable. 119 points. The second quarter has been their quarter throughout the season. They'd love to have it be their quarter here in the Rose Bowl. By the way, they were the top scoring team in the Pac-10 this year. Flick seven for 11 passing, but he stays in the ground to Tyler, and it was read well. Andy Canavino, 41, read the play well, forced Tyler wide, and Mel Owens, 53, finished him off for a loss. One of the things that I really like about this Michigan defense is their quickness and their ability to pursue. You know, one of the ways to test the defense in analyzing their, their seasonal record is to ask how many long runs have been uh, taken against them and how many long passes. Well, we told you that three touchdown passes on the year, only one long run of 30 yards, and just a few between the 15 and 30s. That's a very quick and a very active defense. And a very big play. Washington went from second and two to third and five. Flick over the middle, complete to Allen. Great move. A 29-yard play for Washington. Well, when we uh, talked about the importance of Tom Flick having a big day, even we could not anticipate the kind of early start he would have. He's zipping the ball, and he has receivers open in the Michigan secondary. Anthony Allen doing a fine job of getting away, stealing some extra yardage. I think the thing that's impressive to me is that Flick is reading the defense. He's finding the open man. First down play from the 29 to Son Tyler to the 25-yard line. A gain of four yards. In the first quarter, Merlin, Washington, total yardage, outgained Michigan, 130 yards to 37. And there's the man who's done it, 114 now through the air for Tom Flick. But they were denied. They had that ball down on the goal line, came oh so close to getting it into the end zone. They'd like to go back and have another shot at it, but they may get an opportunity here. Second and six. Possible audible by the quarterback flick. Blindside blitz. He gets away. Throwing to Scancy. Intercepted. So Michigan. Brian Carpenter stops the Huskies. Fleck had not been pressured a great deal early, but he gets the pressure here, and he throws it up. He throws it to a man who was well covered. Brian Carpenter timed the ball perfectly, just cut in on Scancy and took it away from him. Watch the timing here by Carpenter as he cuts across in front of the receiver. Good interception, but they're deep in their own territory. They've dodged another bullet down there, Dick. That's twice now. Well, Carpenter, who was an outstanding long jumper in high school, jumped 24 feet, 4 inches, used that leaping power to duck in front of the target. So, two long drives by Washington, stopped once at the one-foot line, and now on the interception at the Michigan 8. Wangler hands it off. No gain. Butch Wolfock. Well, actually got out across the 10 to the 11-yard line, called it a gain of three as he ducked in under that file with a good second effort. In comes Alan Mitchell, number 30. There's a very important statistic, as we well know. If you can get the ball some extra time through interceptions or fumbles, and Washington's a plus 13, Michigan a plus 7 on the year. Washington has forced an incredible number of fumbles and averaged four takeaways a game during the course of the year, a key to their success. Almost a fumble, but Wolf has a first down at the 21-yard line before Ken Gardner can make the tackle. 
rather a strange play, a very late developing play. It looked like a late trap by number 82, Norm Betts. Now watch on the outside. That's 67 powers coming outside. 82 Betts scissoring to the inside with a late block, and Butch Wolfolk doing a little scissoring of his own as he goes over the top of a tackler. They've got their first down. They've got a little room to operate. I think we might see a more conservative offense here, though, from uh, Bo Schembechler. No score in the game. 12 minutes remaining in the first half. Wolf a hit in the backfield. What a play by Mark Stewart. A sophomore from San Jose, California. He tied for the lead this year with 10 tackles for losses, and he drilled Wolf for that one. He was a sprint champion in high school in San Jose, and he's 6'4 and 227. Interestingly, he was born at the Stanford University Hospital, but stayed in the Pac-10 going north to the great northwest in Seattle, University of Washington. Second and 12. Wolfock picked his hole and drives to the 27. That'll bring up third down and about four. McLean and Stewart, the tacklers for Washington. I mentioned that we might see a more conservative approach from the Wolverines. Certainly, Shem Beckler always at, the, at his own end of the field is going to be very careful about the way he handles that football. He's going to run only high percentage plays, and those basically will be running plays, unless he's down and with his back against the wall. He's also going to take advantage of his best tools, the running game and that big offensive line. That's exactly what he's doing right here. Michigan has won for four in third down conversions thus far. Wolfuck is close. But stop shy of that 30-yard line, and Washington will force Michigan to go to the punting game. Goliardi and Olsen made the tackle. They spot the ball short of the 30. That brings up fourth and a long one, and Don Bracken, the punter, comes in. And on that play, you see one of the basic differences between these two teams. Washington would have thrown the football, and Michigan trusts the running game. Good point, Merlin Olsen. Don Bracken, who's had an excellent day after Merlin pointed out it. He scuffed one on his first attempt, then had a record 73-yarder for the Rose Bowl, and then hit one inside the five. Ray Horton deep at the 30 for Washington. No pressure. Oh, he hits this one. Horton all the way back to the 16. Now it's... yard kick he takes it back 40 yards and how often you see a mistiming of a kick or a punt lead to a big return everyone got down there in time to be bunched up Horton saw some room popped out and a very big play for for Washington looked for a minute like they were going to be pinned back in their own end zone but Horton got them out of trouble and gives the offense excellent field position. And Merlin to harken back on one of the points that we made prior to the game today. That the University of Washington, to play well today, needed a hot hand from Tom Flick. Although they've not scored, he certainly has thrown the ball well. And the other was the great respect opposing coaches have and had this year for the Washington kick return game. And they've shown it there with Horton. 40 yards to set it up first down at the Michigan 35. Kyle Stevens. And he's to the Michigan 27, a gain of eight on first down. Washington certainly in the spirit as they come to Pasadena with the roses on the shoulder pads. They enjoyed their first visit here, some of these youngsters. A handful of them played briefly in the game three years ago when they upset Michigan 27-20. You'll recall that was a game where Warren Moon got them ahead 24-0 and then Washington just did hold off the comeback by Rick Leach and the Wolverines winning 27-20. Stevens, fumble, and it goes right to Washington. That's going to be a touchdown. No, they marked it dead. They marked it dead. Mike Riley caught the fumble, and there's one of the quickest whistles you'll ever see. The man was not down. The tackle forced the ball free. It went ahead to Riley, and for some reason the whistle sounded. 
It almost looked like a planned play, but you wouldn't plan one like this. The ball stripped loose, bounces up into the hands of Riley. Riley thinks he's a halfback or a fullback, and a big one at that. What a moment it would have been for the senior from Auburn, Washington, who played behind Blair Bush and Tom Tamure, both now in the NFL. Watch that ball pop loose. It's hit right at the beginning here, stripped loose. 63, Cedric, Cole, uh, Cedric Winfred. Carraway, the man that knocked him loose. It's third and less than a yard, and Tyler has a first down for Washington at the 24-yard line. We'll see how important that call was. Of course, Bo Schembechler would say, I've got one of those coming anyway. Less than nine minutes left in a scoreless first half, and Don James Huskies continue to move well against this vaunted Michigan defense. Again, Michigan, best defense in almost 50 years. They went 18 quarters without allowing a touchdown to close out the season. Stevens to the 23, where he sits her down. Winfred Carraway, 63, sophomore from Detroit, a high school All-American, along with Mike Turgovac, the senior from Austintown, Ohio. One of three starters on defense, along with Canavino and Owens for the Wolverines. I'm very impressed with the way Washington is mixing pass and run, and I think it's been tough on the Michigan defense. You've got to guess a little bit. You've got to guess in your, in your calls defensively, and I think they've caught Michigan guessing pass a few times and hurt him with the run and vice versa. Second down, a long seven. Stevens again to the 18-yard line where the Huskies will be three yards short of a first down. Gergash and Canavino, the tacklers. Well, here's a chance to test our theory. We talked about Michigan trusting, trusting the run in a third and and four-yard or third and three-yard situation. Quite the opposite for Washington. They seem more comfortable with the pass. Let's see what Dom James has planned on this particular play. Not trying to bail you out just in case that theory doesn't work, but the difference was that Michigan was in its own end of the field, third and four, and now the Huskies are in four-down territory. I'm guessing he's going to run, Merlin. I haven't been right yet this year. <laughs> Wrong. Flick. Incomplete. Anthony Allen at the goal line. He was checked by Marion Body, and by the time he turned, the ball had already dropped incomplete. Anthony Allen, the intended receiver. Let's watch the contact here. There is some contact right there. Now, the defender is allowed to bump the receiver when he's in front of him as long as the ball is not in the air or if the receiver initiates the contact. The official down in that corner reached briefly for his flag, thought better of it. We're going to have a field goal attempt from a very fine kicker, Chuck Nelson. It'll be a 35-yard attempt. It is good! Chuck Nelson, the top place kicker in the conference, nails one from 35 yards, and the Huskies are on the board first. Get a feeling for how exciting that play is to a kicker into Rose Bowl. It's three-pointer through the upright. So the 40-yard punt return by Ray Horton sets up the 35-yard field goal. The Huskies three, the Wolverines nothing. Here's the field goal by Nelson. It appeared for a moment it might be blocked by Michigan, Merlin. They got an excellent penetration, and the Michigan special teams, the kicking units, have played very well in this game so far. They've done a fine job. I don't believe they got a hand on that one, but I, it did look like it from that camera angle. 3 nothing Huskies on the 35-yard field goal by Chuck Nelson. Ray Horton's punt return of 40 yards set up the score. Anthony Carter, Stan Edwards, they stack up to try to deceive the kicker, but nothing is deceptive wow. about that except long. It'll be a touchback. Total offense in the game. Washington three times the yardage over the favorite Michigan Wolverines, but only three points to show for. They've dominated play in the first half. I think you hit the most important statistic right on the head, though. They only have three points, and, of course, that's the most important stat we have in this game. 
Don James knows that uh, Bo Schembechler's team is only a field goal away from a tie and a big play away from a touchdown, which would put him in the lead. Washington three times inside the Michigan 20, but have just a field goal to show for the effort. Stan Edwards, he's been quiet thus far and rips an eight-yard gain before Jerry McLean and Brett Gagliardi can make the tackle. They've been going to Wolfock, and Edwards, who started due to an injury to Harlan Huckleby three years ago in the Rose Bowl, finally gets a chance to lug the ball himself. You see a number of three 100-yard games for Edwards. Wolfock also has three 100-yard games. And uh, they, they actually had a total of eight 100-yard games if you count the other back, uh, Ricks, into that. Larry Ricks had two. Edwards again. Big hole. 40. And a first down at the 45. Washington defense gambling a little bit on the inside. And when you can make the big plays inside on a uh, running game very often by gambling you also are vulnerable and you see right here what happens when you leave a little too much room inside ran right past 64 Rusty Olson who was expecting a play outside six minutes 14 seconds left in the first half three nothing Huskies Edwards on a sweep good penetration boy that Mark Stewart he fought off the blocker got a piece of Edwards slowed him up and number 40 Ken Driscoll finished him off Stewart, the man who made the play outside. Rusty Olson did a good job of getting penetration from the inside, forcing the man wide. And then Stewart, the cleanup man, gets to the outside, dives, gets a hold of Edwards by the ankle to strip him down for a short gain. But wanted to make sure we got Rusty in there cleared up. Didn't make the play the time before. Did make a very important play on that last one. Second and nine from just beyond the 45 of Michigan. Carter is out of your picture to the right. Wangler looking for him. Incomplete at the Washington 47. Carter slipped. Still got his hands on the ball. Mark Stewart was putting pressure on the quarterback. Want to watch a man draw a crowd? Watch number one, Anthony Carter. We talked about Horton. He's going to shadow him all day. Help is on the way. Kenny, Kenny Gardner will be arriving on the scene shortly, but that's a super one-on-one -on -one play on a very fine receiver. And a man who, who's not just a sprinter, he's a football player. He'll go up and he'll fight you for the football. He'll catch you in traffic. And again, at 155 pounds, the lightest man, if not the smallest man on the field. Third down draw play, and it's going to work. Wolf, he's to the 40. He's all the way. On fourth and nine, Butch Wolfock runs 24 yards to the Washington 30-yard line. Wagler gets the ball back to 24. Wolfock in a draw situation. They just caught Washington, I think, gambling all out on the pass rush. Wolfock knows what to do with that football. As we said earlier, he was a sprinter. Took advantage of his speed to get into the secondary. Michigan trailing 3 0. First down at the Husky 30. And Edwards gets about three. Well, we have a moment, Merlin Olson. I'd like to send out a special Happy New Year to a man who has directed this NBC telecast of the Rose Bowl and our tremendous relationship with the Tournament of Roses Committee for 28 years. Harry Coyle calling the shots and what great pictures his cameramen bring us. And Jerry Ireland, Ireland our technical supervisor. You go all the way back to radio days on NBC of the Rose Bowl before TV is 32nd year. Congratulations, gentlemen, and doing a better and better job every year for us. Wangler to throw. <laughs> Alan Mitchell, first and goal. Senior from Detroit has his first catch. Wrangler getting a little extra time because of the fake of the run and throws this right on target. Watch the feet, just barely inbounds. He's got to tap him in. He only needs one foot down in college football, and he got two down. That was even a good catch in professional ball. First and goal, Michigan at the Washington eight-yard line. Wolfuck. McLean drops him at the six. 
They watched Washington make penetration into this same end of the field in the first quarter. They were turned away on the one-foot line. Now they've got their defense on the field. Let's see if they can return the favor to the Michigan Wolverines. Ken Driscoll, linebacker, comes in. Derek Harvey, a safety man out for the Huskies. Wolfuck has 91 yards now in this first half. Wolfuck again. Wolfuck, the leading rusher for the Maize and Blue as a sophomore, and again this year as a senior, has given Michigan the lead for its first time. Wolfuck cutting back against the grain. A play designed to come straight up the middle. He cuts it all the way to the backside, finds plenty of room, and runs over the last man. That's Bill Stapleton, number 11. Drops him into the end zone for the touchdown. Try for a point by Haji Sheik. It's there. So after the field goal by Washington, Michigan engineers an 80-yard drive. Wolfick from six yards for the touchdown and the score with 3.39 remaining in the first half. Michigan seven, Washington three. From Pasadena, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. What a beautiful football day, nearly 80 degrees in Southern California. This 1981 Rose Bowl finds Michigan ahead of Washington, 7-3. Anthony Allen at the five-yard line. Allen of the Huskies breaks a tackle and gets to the 21. Carlton Rose, a linebacker for the Wolverines, made the tackle, and we have a flag on the play at the spot, at the spot where the tackle was made. There's the numbers on the drive, 80 yards in nine plays, with Wolfuck, who was the star runner on that drive, getting the touchdown from six yards out. You saw the referee signal clipping against Washington. Half the distance of the goal to the 10th. We talked about the importance of playing well on special teams. That's one thing you don't want to do. Washington on the run back, first down. Perhaps we'll have a chance to see it. Anthony Allen, number 15, the man who's returning that kick. The, the flag was thrown almost on the sideline. I believe that's it right there. That's 77, the man that's ticketed for that uh, penalty. First down, 10. Fumble! Tom Fleck lost the ball. Who's got it? Apparently, it's Washington's ball, and that could have been a disastrous error. As you will reflect upon the day's play. The Georgia Bulldogs, fighting to be number one, scored on a kickoff fumble by Notre Dame, recovered a fumble of the Irish on the two-yard line, and that touchdown was the difference as Georgia beat the Irish 17 to 10. along with Keith Bostick, the safety. And we, suddenly the momentum seems to have swung. It seems to have swung a bit. And we mentioned how important those bottom line numbers are, those scores on the board. And even though Washington has gained a lot of yardage, moved the ball up and down the field, they've only got three points to show for it. Michigan has allowed some people to move the ball this year. Rich Campbell threw for 249 yards at the University of California. They still beat them in that game easily. On third down, nine. Complete to Tyler, but he, well, he's going to be very close to the first down at the 20-yard line. Bostic wrestled him down. He's playing in his own backyard, Keith Bostic, high school star in Ann Arbor, Michigan, stayed and attended the University of Michigan. And it won't be tough for them to measure this one. And it's a first down. Boy, Tyler's second effort. And how important it is, deep in your own territory, 
And again, you get a feeling for the courage of this Washington team. They uh, they were really blown out of this thing by a lot of people early. They said Washington doesn't have a chance, but Washington has dominated play early. And even though they are behind on the scoreboard, seven to three, they certainly haven't given up anything. That was a key first down. They would have had to punt, and Michigan would have had probably good field advantage with two minutes left in this half. Whoops, early movement, it appeared, against Washington. I believe that was Vandeveer, 79, off a little early on the right-hand side. They've got to be a little nervous. I'm, I'm surprised we haven't had more mistakes in this game than we have had. It is a legal procedure against the Huskies. First down statistic, probably... To hunt to find that meaningful often. Good ball foul, illegal procedure, offense. Gives us a moment to talk about Tom Fleck, the key to the Washington offense. He's thrown the ball 15 times in this first half, completed nine. Interestingly, that's 60% exactly his percentage for the entire season. Has 123 yards through the air. His dad watching from a Seattle hospital. I know this young man's heart and mind are separated by that distance. Concerned about his father. That gets the five yards back on the short pop to Kyle Stevens. That'll bring up second down and ten. Mel Owens made the hit. Mentioning hospitals, I'd like to send out a special New Year's hello to a little Heather. A little friend of mine is spending the holidays in the hospital. I guess we'd like to say hi and uh, a happy new year to everybody who's uh, having to spend a day in a hospital or a week or a month or whatever it happens to be. I hope this will be a better year for you. And we extend that with our very best wishes for 81 to all of you around the United States and those watching this telecast around the world on NBC. Stevens. Almost got to some daylight. He's to the 28-yard line, two yards shy of a Washington first down. The clock is now running at 1:15, 1:14. I'm really impressed with the quality of football we've seen so far in this game. Good offensive performance by both teams. Some outstanding defensive plays. This is a tightly fought football game. I I like the way they're playing this game. Washington now with 59 seconds, taking its time. They don't make the first down. They don't want Michigan to have a lot of time to work with at the end of this half. We'll see some timeouts if Washington picks up the first down. And they will. David Vail, first down at the 45. Out of bounds to stop the clock. 43 seconds left in the half. 17-yard play. David Vail, a favorite receiver for Tom Fleck during the season. We talked about the weakness of the Michigan defense in the flat areas. Keith Bostick, number 13, coming out late. But Vail finds room to amble down that sideline, gets it all the way out just shy of the 45-yard line. They've got time to do something here if they'll get moving. A lot of young high school players watching, hoping they'll be recruited. If you're not recruited by a major school, doesn't mean you can make it. Bale, no one wanted him out of high school. He went to Pasadena City College and now a collegiate star. Down the middle. Incomplete. What a hit on Aaron Williams, and he made a marvelous effort to try to hang on to the ball. Evan Cooper, 21, broke up the play. He's a fifth back in as Michigan's going to an extra defender. 37 seconds left. Watch the concentration of this receiver at the end of this play. Flick gets it a little bit behind him, and he does everything but stand on his head. Look at him reaching back, hangs on to that football as long as possible, but the hit just stripped him of that ball. That's, again, good football on both sides of the line. Second and 10 from the 45 of Washington. They trail Michigan 7-3. to three. Time running out of the half. Open is Scancy. Complete at the Michigan 38. Let's see if Washington calls time. They do. Well, at least there'll be a time call to get the chains in place, or has Washington elected to use a timeout? That timeout that they had to take early in the game when they lost a down on a penalty is very costly to them right now. 29 seconds left. Washington driving close to least field goal range, trailing the Wolverines by four. 
seven to three. Michigan leading Washington. Later in today's game, Merlin and I, along with Jack O'Rourke and Rick Borsano for NBC Radio, will be selecting the Toyota outstanding players from each team, and we'll make the announcement at the end of the game. Each school will receive a one thousand dollar scholarship to their respective general scholarship funds. Don James, Huskies, with twenty nine seconds left in this first half, have a first down at the Michigan thirty eight. I think we got an audible. Flick to throw, over the middle, Anthony Allen, 24-yard line and a first down. Washington has only one timeout left, this timeout an official timeout to move the chains. That was a 14-yard play. We won't see a huddle here. They're already lined up and ready to go. They've called two plays in the huddle, Dick. You'll watch the referee mark the ball and the clock will begin. There it is. 7-3 Michigan. It's lead in jeopardy. Quick out complete to Anthony Allen. They picked up a few yards and stopped the clock with 17 seconds left. And Flick is throwing the ball very effectively. Interestingly enough, after watching him in practice, I think he's throwing it better in the game than he did in practice. He is really a gamer. He's had some great games, Merlin. Arizona will attest to that. He was 16 for 17 against the Wildcats and three touchdowns. 7-3, to three, Michigan in the lead. The last three possessions, or the last two, have led to scores, and Washington trying to get something themselves before the intermission. From the Michigan, 19. In the flat to Stevens. Is he out of bounds? Yes! With a first down at the Michigan 10. Stopping the clock with 11 seconds left. What a drive by Washington. Flick again. Reading the defense and taking advantage of that open area in the flat. Getting the ball to a running back who knows what to do it. Just barely did get out of bounds. There. In fact, it looked from that angle that he didn't get out of bounds. The clock is running. Five. I don't think Washington realizes it. Going for the touchdown. Incomplete and one second left. With one second left, Washington will have a final chance, and they're not going to gamble. They're bringing in the field goal unit. A shot and a touchdown. The ball thrown over the top of Carpenter, Brian Carpenter, number nine. And Anthony Allen gets up, gets one hand on the football, and simply could not hang on. But that's the kind of pass you're not going to throw in an area where it can be intercepted. An apparent field goal attempt from 20, make that 27 yards. And it is good. So on the final play of the first half, the Huskies get their second field goal. And at the intermission, well, just the way it ended last year, we had a one-point game. After 30 minutes, it's one point today. The Maize and Blue, seven. And the purple and gold of Washington 6th. We'll be back with an excellent halftime show for you right after we pause for these words. 